Hello and welcome to the official Develop Your Element channel. In the previous video, we looked at how earthly people respond during conflicts. This time, we're going to look at airy people and how they respond. We're going to look at some of the most common things they do during these stressful situations. It doesn't matter if you're airy or not. This video will help you to understand and identify how airy people function during conflicts so you can understand them better and improve the way in which you're managing your conflicts with them so you avoid complicating things extra. We're going to give you very tangible tips for improving the way in which you're handling your conflicts with airy people. It's important to recognize the way that we respond during moments of conflict, as well as how other people are responding. Because many times, the lack of understanding makes conflicts much more complicated and much more difficult to handle. In the case of the elements, each personality will use their instincts inadequately. Sometimes they might bring their personality to an extreme or they might repress their personality, causing conflicts to be overcomplicated beyond what's necessary. We're going to look in this video at how this shows up in airy people. Airy people don't really like being under situations of high pressure and high stress, which are two things that are very present during conflict. And because of this, they'll try to escape from these types of situations. For them, taking a step back from conflicts, getting away and having some space helps them to analyze the situation and find effective solutions. If the problem or the conflict is between many people, this is a bit easier for them to do because they can just suddenly kind of disappear and then come back once things are a little bit more calm and relaxed. But if the conflict is one-on-one, -on -one, they'll turn to various different strategies in order to escape. One of them being that they might just listen, be very quiet and turn very passive and permissive, kind of a bit like the earthly people. For them, they'll overthink what to say to not intensify the conflict. But since the situation is already tense and difficult, they'll have a hard time thinking clearly. And it's possible that they sort of end up without knowing what to say. As a result of this, they can accidentally agree to things that they don't really want simply because they don't say no to it clearly enough or because they show that they're willing to consider it, but they haven't really committed to it yet. Staying quiet during conflicts can be one of their best strategies in order to avoid intensifying the situation. But if the conflict has gotten so intense, so difficult for them, that they really are running out of options, they might say really hurtful things to other people and say whatever is necessary in order to end the conflict. Now, these are people who are very observant and analytical, so they'll know how to really touch upon your insecurities and your weaknesses. And if they feel like they're up against the wall and they have no other option, they may turn to attacks as their last resource to handle these stressful situations. The majority of the times they're going to try to reduce or avoid conflicts and problems. They may even learn very well how to see in other people the signs that something's off or that the other person might be wanting to get in a fight or an argument, that there might be some kind of confrontation. For airy people, it can be difficult to resolve a conflict quickly, even more so when there are a lot of different variables, a lot of different people and perspectives involved. Because for them, they want to analyze the situation, they want to see all the different gray areas, all the different ways of looking at it, and find a solution that's effective, that's easy, and that's gentle for everybody involved. So for them, it can be very easy or very difficult actually reaching a solution. If you give them space to think and you alleviate pressure, they can be extremely effective at coming up with solutions. But if you pressure them and if you don't give them any space, they will shut down and it's possible they don't reach any kind of solution, any kind of conclusion at all. For airy people, it can be very difficult to communicate during conflicts. If you want them to share their ideas and their opinions, what they're thinking, you will have to be very clear that you want them to be involved and you also have to wait for them to feel comfortable sharing. 
If you have the opportunity to talk to them in a private and calm setting, it's more likely that they'll share their ideas than if you're asking them to share in the middle of the chaos of the discussion. All of these instincts, all of these needs, they'll intensify when the airy person is drained or insecure. So that doesn't mean that they'll always be like this. An airy person who's regenerated and secure themselves can deal with a lot more intensity and will have an easier time with conflicts. But there are also airy people that when they're drained, they will disappear from problems, from conflicts. They might disappear from their relationships for long periods of time. Some airy people, they can be in your life and then disappear for years even. And in their head, they're trying to find solutions to some kind of issue or finding ways to deal with the situation. But oftentimes they're also avoiding the problem and they're just extending that experience. So when airy people are regenerated, they're much more participative and they share their ideas much more easily and much more openly. If you have identified at all with this way of responding during conflicts, it's quite likely that you have something airy going on. So it's good maybe now to reflect on how you've been responding during conflicts. And if you know other people who have been acting like this during moments of high stress, it's quite likely that they're airy. Now that you know how airy people respond during conflict, I'd like to give you some recommendations so that you can resolve conflicts with them much more easily. Although the most important thing during a conflict is not to suppress any of their instincts and allowing them to manifest their personality openly, we're going to look at some more practical tips for how to make this happen. Don't be too intense with an airy person and even less so during a conflict. Don't pressure them to make decisions and let them sort of take their own time. With them, one very useful tactic is sort of expressing the ideas that you want them to think about or understand ahead of time so that they can sort of take their time to resolve the conflict afterwards and during a more calm and peaceful setting. You can even avoid conflicts with them completely if you start expressing ideas sort of with a bit of time before decisions have to be made because then they can take their time, relax, consider the things that you want them to consider and you don't come at them right when it's time. We need a decision, we need a solution, right now, moment of pressure. Also, if you want an airy person to open up more and share with you more, one thing you have to do is relieve pressure. Sending them the message that there's not gonna be a conflict or any more tension based on what they say. For them, it can be very hard to open up in front of other people, but when they feel a sense of trust, they're very transparent and very open. This is useful to know, especially when you're having conflicts that are a bit more personal and you want them to share how they're feeling. So if you can let them know and assure them that whatever they say or do is not going to cause more intensity, more pressure, then they'll share very openly what they feel, at least when you ask them about it. The more you understand airy people, the easier it's going to be to understand them and resolve any kind of difficult situation. If you'd like to know more about them, I really invite you to look at the other videos that we have talking about the airy personality. Take in mind that there are moments when it's better to leave a conflict for a little bit, let people kind of blow off steam and relax and regenerate, and then face the conflict afterwards when everybody's in a more positive state in their personality. That's it for today's video. Write to me in the comments what other things do airy people do when they're in the middle of a conflict. This can be if you're airy or if you know other airy people whose experiences you'd like to share. If you like this video, give it a like. If you loved it, share it with your loved ones. And if you'd like to know more, subscribe to our channel and press the little bell in order to receive notifications every time that we release new content. In the next video, we're going to talk about how the metallic people respond during conflicts. So don't miss that video.